Hello students and welcome to the next lesson in our AS Level Physical Geography course. Today we're going to look at the formation of corries, arets and pyramidal peaks. Corries. A corry is an armchair shaped rock hollow in the valley. It has a steep wall, a tarn and a corry lip. Now the formation of a corry starts with a process of nivation. So what happens is we get nivation in the hollow. We get snow, which gets onto this hollow, and then due to chemical weathering, which is pretty much corrosion due to the acidity of the snow, which then dissolves the rock, and frost shattering. That's when the water moves into cracks in the rock, freezes, occupies 9% more space, and then cracks them. The snow eventually deepens the hollow due to these two processes. As more and more snow accumulates, a fern is made, and then the glacier um, becomes what it is. So more and small, more snow, which is now getting into this hollow, produces what we call the start of a glacier. And this is what the glacier pretty much looks like. The hollow now has a gradient, a slight gradient at that, because the glacier can move down it. As the glacier moves down it, it erodes the gradient and the valley, and as a result, we start to get perhaps a slight incline. The glacier will begin to pivot around the point in the hollow. Rotational flow then occurs here, which further deepens the hollow due to more erosion. So as you can see by the diagram, we have now a sort of circular um, part in our hollow. Now the actual glacier, as it moves down, is going to be stuck around a centre of gravity in one of these points in the hollow. So as it moves down, it begins to rotate and rotate and rotate. And this is going to deepen the hollow and erode it even more at a very fast rate. Plucking occurs at the base of the glacier and the glacier walls. This makes them steep and we may also get a bergschrund. Now this forms at the top of the glacier due to the weight of the glacier pushing it down to pivot around the hollow. So it's pretty much just a gap between the steep wall which has been made steep due to plucking and um, the actual glacier itself. Then, once the glacier gains enough weight, it tries to move uphill out of its hollow. When it does so, it loses energy and then deposits any material it's carrying. This is deposited adjacent to the hollow and forms a corry lip, which you can see pointed by deposition on the graph. Then, in warmer temperatures, the glacier may melt and the lake is formed. Now, this lake is called a tarn. It's dammed by the corry lip, which has been formed by the deposited material from the glacier. For example, the Eastdale Tarn is a formation of a now tarn at the end of the formation of a corry, and it's located in the Lake District in the UK. Arets. An arete occurs when two corries on opposite sides of the valley or a ridge then begin to erode into each other. It creates the landform we know as an arete. For example, Striding Edge in the Lake District. Now, as you can see in the diagram here, we have two corries which are eroding into each other, and a ridge is what is located between the two of them. That ridge is called the arete. Pyramidal Peaks. A pyramidal peak is when three corries around a single point begin to erode into each other. This leaves a rock feature pointing up between the three. For example, the Matterhorn in Switzerland. What you can see here is the same diagram, but imagine a third corrie on the opposite end. As you can see, this has made three arets, and the three arets join at the top to form a pyramidal peak. Here are some questions on the formation of corries, arets, and pyramidal peaks. Have a go at answering these on another sheet of paper, and pause the video to give yourself time. Hit play whenever you're ready to see the answer. Here's the answer. If you got these right, congratulations. I'd advise you to move on to the next video, which will be on the formation of Rosh Mutones. Thanks for watching and good luck in your exams.